Hello guys, welcome back to this week's episode of TGIF. Thank God it's forever. Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. This here is Chaplain Andrew to teach you the unchangeable and unfailable Word of God. Listen for this theme song and you'll know. It's me, hello, podcast land. Hello guys. Sorry about yesterday. I didn't do the show yesterday. I did say I was going to do it today, and I am. And I, I got a, I got a two-part message, maybe even a three-part message to this, because there's so much stuff that's in this one message alone. I just scratched the surface. I gave you just a thumbnail sketch of what is going to go on in this message tonight. It's a good message. You guys are going to love it. I'm going to love preaching this message too, but. I do want to say sorry about yesterday. My mother-in-law came in. Hello, Mom. I have to send her the link, actually, so she can view the show. Maybe her and Tom can listen together. So let me go into my speaker on my phone. Give me just a minute. There we go. There we go. There we go. Yes. There we go. Now we've got to, let's hit the share button there. Mary Lou. Great. My phone just died. So I got to charge my phone. And then as soon as I charge my phone, I will let my mother-in-law have the link to the show. It shouldn't take long to charge. But hey, how are you guys doing today? I got to prepare for Pastor, well, Dr. Scott tomorrow. And I want you guys to give me just a second, actually. Let me plug my phone in so I can charge this thing. Give me just a second, guys. There we go. I want you guys also to bear with me tonight. I am not doing so good today. I'm physically fine as I'm not sick. I don't got any colds or anything or nothing like that. It's just I did go to the doctor today because I was something going on with my ring finger on my right hand. And it's locked in place. It doesn't move. So I I found out, number one, I googled it, and number two, the doctor told me when I went to the office today, which, praise God, I got a free visit for the doctor office today, because when I went there, she couldn't do anything. But she did confirm to me that Google and Alexa was right. I got a classic case of trigger finger, and no, I do not own a gun. (laughs) I never want to it's just my personal opinion my wife if she ever wants to she can own one but I would never own one myself so I got what's called trigger finger and what that just basically means is my finger locks up and it does all kinds of weird stuff so I'm about to send my mother-in-law the link now so I just bear with me because I cannot use that finger today. And the way I hold the mouse, it end it ends up um it ends up wait, I don't want to play no extra I don't want to play that. And what happens is is when uh give me a second. You I can Listen in. Now live. <coughs> so it just locks my finger up. It's my ring finger on my on my uh, right hand. It just locks it in place. It can't move now. Now what normally would happen was is it would it would lock up in the morning, and then by the time Nine o'clock rolls around. I'm going to put gloves on. My fingers start getting back to normal, and I'll start exercising, opening, closing it, and making it 
do some exercises and stuff. And so when I do that, it would, you know, bring my finger back towards normalcy. It would hurt a little bit. But today I woke up and completely locked into place. I used to, I tell my workers all the time at work now, I'm unintentionally throwing up gang signs. Because <laughs> that finger is bent and I got my index, my middle, and my pinky, and my thumb left. So if I open up all four fingers and I shake it back and forth like the rap star, she shakes her two fingers. But it's like I'm unintentionally throwing up gang signs. But I'm not. <laughs> but, I mean, I gotta go see a hand specialist on that. And they're probably gonna cut into my hand and cut my tendons or something. I have no idea what we're gonna do. People, I was listening to some videos on YouTube with doctors saying that 90% of the time, cortisone shots work. But I don't want to pay an expensive price for a cortisone shot when it may do absolutely nothing. Just because they say 90% of the time it works, I might be that 90, I might be that 1% that it doesn't work for. And then I paid a whole pretty penny for something I didn't even need. So bear with me tonight as I preach the word. I'm missing one finger. With that being said, how about we get into a few but brief announcements? Take it away, hon. Thank you, Mr. TGIF, and here's for our announcements. On Monday nights, we have Mr. TGIF with the message. On Wednesdays, we have Outside the Classroom Wednesdays with Dr. Scott Mullen. On Thursdays, we have Kingdom Collaboration Thursdays with Pastor Lance and Ernissa Travis. Saturdays are Worship Saturdays with Mr. TGIF and a few gospel artists. Keep your ears peeled. We are looking and working on more words and worship for you, our beloved listeners. God bless you. Thank you, Mr. TGIF, and enjoy our next episode. Thank you, honey. That was absolutely beautiful. By the way, how can you keep your ears peeled? That must hurt. And today is not Monday. Today is Tuesday. So today's, this week's episode is the Monday show on Tuesday. <laughs> so hey, I'm going to uh, play our first song on the list. And I'm using trackpad today. Not that I want to, but. Sorry about that, guys. I, I don't like using trackpads. Trackpads, to me, it's just I mess up too much. And as you can see. I literally played the wrong, well, I played the right song, but it, it it started already, and we don't want that. So our main song of the show, let me get over here so I can delete this here. Our main song of the show is Unto You by none other than Dr. Tom Ray from his CD, Evangel Live, Enjoy Unto You. Yeah. 
Do you visit us in this place? We pray that you would magnify your name, God. For you're worthy of this praise and this glory. There you go, guys. That was unto you, but none other than Dr. Tom Ray. Let's pray first before we break the bread and get into the Word. Lord, we humbly come back before you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you're God and God alone. We thank you, Lord, that we get to learn about you on today, Lord, and that we, we count it a privilege to learn who and what you are. We ask you to write it on the tablets of our heart that when we depart, it will not depart from us. And Lord, I ask you to do what you need to do for my hand so that it comes back to normalcy so I can be able to play the piano for you again, Lord, and do things that I normally would do with my hand. Whether you heal me or the doctors fix me with surgery or whatever the cortisone shots, whatever they have to do, Lord, you let that happen so it can fix my hand. We thank you, Lord, that we get to honor you today and learn more about you. In Jesus' name, amen. I entitled this message today, guys, The Benefits Are Great. So let's talk for a minute. Give me two seconds. My phone is ringing here for a second. I'll be right back. What I should have done is, sorry about the guys, what I should have done is, hello, you're on the air, how can I help you? That would have been real funny. But I entitled this message, and now that my mom called me, it's okay. I entitled this message, The Benefits Are Great. Let me take a drink from my water. Okay, there we go. The message tells the benefits are great. In our world, our jobs give us great benefits. Like, like mine gives me hospital, vision, etc. But we as Christians, we get benefits from God we do not even know about. A friend of mine back in the day, had a shirt that said, work for God. The retirement benefits are great. So, we get we get these different benefits from being a born-again believer. Benefits that you don't even know you get. And they're spectacular benefits. They're things that are life-changing. We want to raise that work. I'll tell you a quick little joke here. Speaking of benefits, raises, and stuff like that. A guy goes to his boss. He says, boss, he says, you pay me pennies on the dollar. He says, I need a raise, like now. He goes, he goes, and I've already got companies after me. He says, I need a raise now or I'm leaving. He goes, I already got companies after me. So his boss thinks about an hour later, comes back, says, okay, I got it. He goes, how about a $10 raise? And five and uh five weeks paid vacation. Guy goes, Wow, that's wonderful. He goes, I'll take it. Before he left, his boss says, Before you leave, what companies were after you? He says, the electric company, the gas company, the cable company. <laughs> Just be aware of how you say things. So we get all these great benefits from our work, but we get 
wonderful, life-changing benefits from God. And we're going to discuss some of these. And there's going to be a part two to this, definitely. So, one of the first benefits that we gain from being a born-again, believing Christian of God is found in John chapter 14, verse 27. Get your Bibles open. And go to John chapter 14. And starting at verse that's 29. Starting at verse 20. The New Testament is so much harder to find verses in there. Starting at verse 27. Peace I leave with you my peace i give you not as the world gives do i give to you let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid i'll read one more passage you have it says you have heard me say to you i am going away and coming back to you if you loved me, you would rejoice because I said I am going to the Father. For my Father is great, is greater than I. So, first benefit that we get is found in passage 27 of John. It's John 14, 27. And the first thing that we see, it says, 27 says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. So the first benefit we get from God, we get the peace. Let me me read my, my notes here. First, where did I put it yet? First, the first benefit we get is peace. But not just peace, but peace that comes all understanding. What did the the Bible just say? The Bible just said, look, it says, the peace that I give to you says, let your heart not be what? Troubled. What does that mean? That means that my peace is so calming. My peace is so wonderful that anything you're going through, anything you're going through, whether it's depression, whether it's suicide, whether it's drugs and alcohol, whether it's pornography, whatever you're going through, my peace will calm all understandings. My peace will give you comfort. You ever heard the old saying, you sleep like a baby in the rain? Technically, that's not a true statement if you think about it, because here's the thing. How can we say we slept like a baby when babies wake you up half the night? Go figure that one out. But the old saying goes, we slept like a baby, right? In the rain. Here's the thing. That's what peace is supposed to do. It's supposed to give you a calmness that you can look at whatever situation you're going through and say, you know what? God's peace is bigger than that. You could be sitting there financially in debt and be losing your house and say, God's peace is bigger than that. Now, does that mean that God's going to save that specific house? Maybe, may not, but God's peace is bigger than that. Because you know what? God will never leave his children. Uh, God will never leave his children, you know, leave them hanging. I told my boss today, I said, look, boss, I said, Jeff, I said, if you have to need me and I'm going to the doctor office, I said, I'll be back, probably be back to work. Because it was already closing time anyways. But I said, I'll, I'll still be in the area right across the street. If you need me, because the order didn't come in just yet at the time. So if you need me, call me or text me. I'll come right back to work. I'll come right back in and I'll help you get that order back. I said, I'll do that for you. I'm not going to leave you hanging. See, that's the way God is. God doesn't leave you hanging. That's why he gives you peace that calms all understanding. That's why he gives you such a peace to where you can say, you know what? It's okay. It's just fine. 
You hell could be breaking loose in your life. You could be just like Job, and hell be breaking loose. You can lose your family. You can lose your you know your crops. You can lose your your cattle, your donkeys. In this day, you can lose your cars, your houses. Everything can burn to the ground. You have zero. But you know what? You can be like Job and say, you know, it's okay. It is okay. Because the peace of God is what calms everything. It calms all understandings. Our second benefit that we get from God is found in Jeremiah 2, 9 through 11. So we're going to go all the way to Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 9 through 11. So we got to flip around because there we go. Jeremiah chapter 2. Starting at verse 9. We're going to get to verse 9. The Old Testament is so much easier to read. I mean, it's all lined up exactly as you want. Therefore, verse 9, Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 9, it states this. Therefore, I will... I will yet bring changes, charges against you, says the Lord, and against your children's children. I will bring change. Did I do that right? That's Jeremiah. Okay, it's 2, 9 through 11. So that was 9. So 10, 4. So chapter 9, we'll restart again, 9. Therefore, I will yet bring change. A charge against you, so therefore I'll yet bring charge against you, says the Lord, and against your children's children I will bring charges. For pass behind the coats of Cyprus and see, send to Kedler and consider diligently. And see if there has been such a thing. 11. Has a nation changed its God, gods, which are not gods, but my people have changed their glory? For what does not, so for what does not profit? I'm not sure why I put that there. Let me see what my notes say here for a minute. So, um, let me let me get out my phone for a minute because sometimes, sometimes the New King James Version doesn't always pan out the way I would like it to. It's a good version, and I, and I approve of it. So we're going to look this up real quick here at Jeremiah 2, 9 through 11. And I will bring charges against you, against your children's children, 10, cross over to the Coast of Cyprus and look, send to Kedler and observe clearly, see if there has ever been anything like this. Has a nation ever changed its gods, yet they're not gods at all? Let me get to the NIV. They're not gods. As a nation ever changed its gods, yet they are not gods at all. But my people have exchanged their glorious God for worthless idols. There we go. I just, sorry guys. So chapter 2, verse 9 through 11, it says, Therefore I'll yet bring charges against you. I'm not sure why I put that in there, but not sure why. Sometimes I sometimes I wonder. Um let 
Let me do this for just a second. Let me get into my chat GPT. Okay, here we go. Twenty nine eleven. There we go. Okay, twenty nine eleven. I'm so sorry. I, I miss. I missed. No, someone needed to hear that. That they would. That God would not bring charges. So, I'm glad Chat GPT is still available on my phone here. Oh, I did have it right. Twenty nine two dots and eleven. I thought it was nine through eleven. So it's chapter twenty nine. Yes, chapter twenty nine. Of Jeremiah, and I'll get to that in just a brief second. Thank you, Jesus. You are absolutely wonderful, and I need you. So, chapter 29 and verse 11. So, let me get this plugged back in. Sorry, guys, if this you're hearing that sound. So, we gotta go to chapter 29. So, we gotta go. Up a little bit. I read my my notes wrong. Chapter twenty nine, starting at verse eleven. There it is. Twenty nine. One of my gospel singers actually actually talks about that very scripture 29 starting at verse and this is ivan parker one of the greatest singers i know from the gaithers this is one of his favorite verses of all time 29 starting at verse okay i gotta find my 11 now 29 Verse, why does it go like that for 10, 11, for I know the thoughts that I think forward toward you, so I know the thoughts I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace, like we spoke before, and not of evil, to give you a future and a what? hope so and then it says in the very next one it says it says he uh, to give you a future and a hope then you will call upon me and I'll go to pray to and so you call upon me and you call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. So the second thing that we get is a benefit of being a uh, born again Christian in Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, not two nine through eleven twenty nine eleven. The second benefit we get from God is hope, and not just hope. And not just hope, but hope for the future. To prosper, not only physically, but spiritually and emotionally. So God gives us a hope. God not God just doesn't leave us hanging and he does this, this, and this and say, okay, here you go. No, he even gives us a hope. So God, again, does not leave us hanging. God is not like a movie. Where the end, you don't know where it's at. See, God doesn't leave us hanging. He gives us not only peace that calms all understanding, but after he gives us the peace, he gives us hope. Hope for the future. Why? Because when you're in your little struggle, you're in your little battle, and you're going through this, right? And you're you're fighting, you're battling the devil, and you're sitting there going, bad devil, back off, you back off, you back. And you're tired, and you're wore out, <clears throat> and finally he gives you that peace, right? He doesn't just stop there. He gives you hope for the future. He gives you the hope that says, look, that again is not going to happen on my watch. That right there, not going to happen again. I'm giving you a future 
that you can look forward to. You know, you might be scared, well, what if this happens again? Don't worry about that. Because now I not only give you peace, but I give you hope for the future. And that hope will not let that happen again. So God not only just gives you the peace, the calm understanding, he gives you hope for the future. He gives you something to look forward to. He says, look, man, I got this benefit right here. It's called, it's called hope. And it's wonderful. You got to look at it. And you get such a hope for the future. I mean, there's so many things I'm, I've been doing lately in God that I'm like, wow, God's really giving me hope, isn't he? And it, for me, personally, it's a, it was a scary thing at first when I first started getting God's hope and God's peace. Because, you know, being that I was a new Christian back then, I didn't know what the hope of and peace and uh, peace and hope of God was. I didn't know that this strange entity that I do not see wants to give me peace. I didn't see that the strange entity I do not see wants to give me hope. The only hope that I had was in finding another man to make me feel secure. Because, see, when I first became a Christian, I was a scrawny dude. I couldn't fight for myself, so I had to find me a man that would be with me for the rest of my life and protect me. You know, I was that type of person to where I was going to let him be that man to protect me. And you all know I was gayer than a $3 bill, so, you know, I wouldn't find me a woman to do such a thing. Back then, I found me a man, and I was like, yep, I'm going to find me a man. He's going to protect me. And it's going to be wonderful. I'm going to do this, this, and this for him. But he's going to protect me. He's going to keep me safe. And then after that all went broke loose and God delivered me from all that garbage, then I'm like, well, wait a minute. What's going on here? I don't know anything about what's going on. I don't desire to do that no more. But I need someone to protect me. And this this so-called God that I'm getting into, I don't know who he is. I don't know what he's doing. Uh, It scares me because... This so-called person that I hear about in a book, I called it a book back then, a book says he wants to give me hope and gives me peace. But I don't see him. Where is he at? Why doesn't he just show up in front of me and say, here, poof, ta-da? I had all those questions. But I rolled with the punches. And I said, you know what? I said one day, I said, God, If you really want to give this to me, if you really are real, you show that to me. And what happened? Long story short, here I am today, preaching the word of God through the internet on what I call a podcast called TGIF. So see, God did something. He changed my heart completely. So, I mean, did he give me peace and a hope for the future? Absolutely. Now that I see these things happening... It don't scare me no more. But back then, I didn't know what that was. I just knew some, some, you know, uh, invisible person wants to give me peace and hope for the future. And I don't know who this invisible person is. I can't even see him. And I'm supposed to believe in that invisible person. I'm supposed to have faith in something that is invisible or just air. And not even there. So believe me, when I first became a Christian, I asked God for different signs. And God showed up and showed off in many different ways to where I could not refute it. So the second thing that God gives us as a benefit of being a Christian, a born-again believer, is a hope for the future. So the first thing gives us peace, peace that comes all understanding. The second benefit he gives us is a hope for the future. And the third we find in John 3, 16, one of my absolute 100% favorite of all time scriptures. And we all know it, and we will repeat as I read it. John chapter 3, starting at verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be 
saved. So our third benefit that we get of being a born again believer, the benefit we get, the third benefit we get is salvation. It says, whoever believes in him, not whoever gives more, not whoever talks to God more, not not whoever talks to God more, it says, whoever believes in him shall not die, but live with him forever. And not only that, he says, look, I send my son into the world not to condemn you. I don't send Jesus into the world because you're a bad, rotten sinner, and I need to point that out to you every single day of the week and say, you're rotten, you're bad, you're sinful, you're rotten, you're bad, you're sinful, you're rotten, you're bad, you're sinful. No, he don't need to do that. But what he does need to do he says, I send my son to this world to what? Not condemn the world, but that the world through my son, that the world through Jesus will be what? Saved. Not that the world through Jesus will be condemned, will be, well, I feel like crap now. Oh, poor me. No. He says that the world through my son Jesus might be what? Saved. He don't just... He didn't bring Jesus into the world to say, look what you did. Ha, ha, ha. No, he's not here to put you down. He's not here to point fingers. God has all the right in the world to point fingers at us. Trust me. I am one to admit that myself. God has all the right in the world to look what you did. Look what you did. Because we did these things. We've done these things. And God has all the right in the world to point his finger at us. But he doesn't. He sent his son to earth that he might die on a cross and that we through that bloodshed sacrifice will be saved. I saved the best best for last because that is the best thing that God can give to you as one of his benefits. That is big. And it's, he's not trying to condemn you. He's trying to encourage you. By having Jesus die on the cross, his only begotten son, now wipes our, what, debt clean. You ever heard of this, these commercials on TV for debt consolidation? You want the best debt consolidation you can think of? Except Jesus, the Lord and Savior. Because when you do, that bloodshed sacrifice now clears and wipes away every last drop of that debt. So when you finally get up to heaven, and you get to the pearly gates, and Satan accuses you, look what he did, he slandered his friends, Ah, he was gay. He he did it with other men. Then when he went to being straight, well, he wasn't straight, but he pretended to be. He went with every other woman in town. Look at this, look at that, blah, blah, blah. And then he forgets to, you know, mention that, you know, three years, four years after all that happened, that he became saved and accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. And now Jesus steps and says, well, wait a minute. But wait a minute. My blood blood shed sacrifice covers that. It also covers that. Mm, It covers that too. Oh, and one more thing, devil. It covers that one right there too. So uh, can you tell me what what else is left in his life? Uh, Saved. Sanctified. He worshipped me. He loved me. He prayed to me constantly. He spoke my word to other people. He ran a podcast about me. He told the world about me. Wait a minute, Satan. Where's all the negative stuff you just mentioned? Oh, I'm so sorry. It's gone. Why? Because my blood covered it. Jesus' blood covers that. And that's the ultimate sacrifice of love. The Bible said love covers the multitude of sins. Jesus' love did exactly that. So the point is, is this, is that being a a born-again Christian, we are to what? We are to, well, being a born-again Christian, our benefit, the best benefit we get is salvation. Because if you think about it this way, if we were to, if we were to go straight to hell, I mean straight up to the pearly gates right now, 
and didn't have a chance to sin. I mean, didn't have a chance to repent, right? Do you think we'd make it to heaven? Of course not. That's why it's important to repent every waking moment you have. Every chance you do, you say, Lord, forgive me of this, forgive me of that. Even say, Lord, clean my subconscious mind, because that is the worst thing for a Christian is their subconscious. Because here's the thing, your subconscious harbors everything you've ever done your entire life, replays it over and over and over and over and over again. It's like the Energizer Bunny. Your subconscious mind keeps going and going and going and going. And I'm not trying to be funny, but you get the point. So we need to cleanse that too by saying, Lord, just, just clean it up. Get rid of that junk. In Jesus' name, amen. But see, it's important to repent every day because we don't know where we're going. We don't know when God would call us home. But see, our benefit is salvation. And if we don't repent, how can we receive that benefit of God if we don't repent? So the three benefits that God, I'm going to do a part two to this. The three benefits that God gives to us is peace, a hope for the future, and salvation. And I saved the best for last. But salvation is the biggest one. And we need to have that salvation. Because you know what? It is no fun if you're not serving God for the rest of eternity. So, hey, that's it. That's our message for today. I'm sorry it was a little short there, but I had to shorten it because I am extremely tired, but it was a very good message. I really enjoyed preaching that word. And there, there definitely is going to be a part two. I'm actually going to do this right here live on the show. Let me do this right now just so I don't forget. And we are going to do this. We are going to do this the right way. So we spell B E N E F I T S. The B E N. E-N-E-F-I-T-S. The benefits are great. Part two. There you go. The benefits are great. Part two. I already got the title message written out. Yes, there's going to be, there might even be a part three. There's so many benefits that we get from God that I can't even cover in a lifetime here on earth. There's so many of them. Let's get into our next song on the list. And our next song is, we'll sing hallelujah by none other than the K. Dano Spirit and Truth Worship Band. Enjoy with Sing Hallelujah. We'll sing hallelujah. We'll sing hallelujah. We'll sing hallelujah, we'll sing hallelujah.
There you go, guys. That was We'll Sing Hallelujah by none other than the Kay Danner's Spirit and Truth Worship Band. We got three more songs to play. We're going to play two. We're going to pray. Then we'll play the last one. Our next song is not track seven by unknown artists. It is Holy, it is Holy Spirit, Move On Me by none other than Pastor Evangelist Dudley Smith. Enjoy. Holy Spirit, Move On Me.
There you go, guys. That was Holy Spirit Move On Me by none other than Pastor Evangelist and my guest on the show, Dudley Smith. Our next song on the list before we pray is Breathe by none other than Dr. Prophet Larry Orell. Enjoy Breathe. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily Desperate for you, and I, I'm lost without you. This is the air I breathe. You are my destiny. I'm so lost without you.
There you go, guys. That was breathed by none other than Dr. Prophet Larry Earl. Let's pray. Lord, help me come back to pray, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that you are God and God alone. And I thank you, Lord, you gave me the ability with my mm. bum hand today, Lord, to be able to do the show and be able to get your word out there, Lord, because the devil tries everything he can, and it just doesn't work. <clears throat> so I pray, Lord, that you keep me going, even though my hand is bum and my hand's like this, you keep me going each and every week, Lord, until it gets fixed, that I can continue preaching your word. Forgive us, Lord, of all unrighteousness. If you find anything, as Bill Gates once sang about, if you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out and strengthen me. You want to live right, want to be safe, want to be whole. I thank you, Lord, that you're giving everyone their heart's desire, at the sound of the voice, their heart's desire, as long as not be what? Selfish. And Lord, I ask you to heal them from the tops of their heads, to the soles of their feet, from cancer, diabetes, muscular dystrophy, multiple sclerosis. Heal my sister's heart and her diabetes that are not bad no more. And heal my sister-in-law's heart that is not bad no more as well, Lord. And Lord, I ask you to heal them from diseases that for, I ask you to heal people from diseases that contracted themselves through sin. Yes, HIV, AIDS, syphilis, gonorrhea, herpes. Why? When you heal them, show your mercy, your power, and your grace. I'm reminded of a scripture that says, you came through the door. It doesn't say you opened the door. It says you passed right straight through the door because you're all spirit at that moment. You said, Thomas, look at my hands. Thrust your finger in my side and see that I'm God. What did Thomas do? He got on his knees and said, truly, you are the son of God. What did you say? Blessed are those who have seen and believe. But the Lord doesn't stop there. He says, blessed are those who have not seen yet still believe. So show them now, Lord. So when they come back needing absolutely anything, they won't have to say it. See it to believe it. Because your word again, Lord, says you're the same God yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you. We praise you. We honor you. It's all in the matchless name of Christ. There we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen, ba doom doom doom. Amen, doom doom doom. Amen, amen, amen. Our last song on the list is Sweet Salvation Blues by my friend and guest on the show, The Light Warrior. Enjoy Sweet Salvation Blues by my guest and friend on the show, The Light Warrior. Enjoy Sweet Salvation Blues. <laughs> She said, I want a three children. I got four instead. The third one had died. She cried out, but this one's all ugly and red. Now, Doc, take him back where you got him from. I'm going back to bed. a special plan for me to preach born into this sad world it brought me here to teach there ain't found the savior yet he's not out of your reach jesus christ is his name so come to him i say Cause I made a 
decision, the best one I could choose. I'm walking with Jesus, and my trip it never ends. So come on and join me. Come on. Because 
cover your sin It's your time to choose And you will be singing The sweet salvation Just Jesus Call it salvation There you go, guys. That was Sweet Salvation Blues by my friend and guest on the show, The Light Wire. That does conclude our show for today. Two things to quickly remind you. You can download a previous version of the app. Go to the Google Play Store, the Amazon App Store, and the App Toy Market. And also, guys, ask your Alexa device, say open podcast portal, and just say welcome to, welcome back to podcast portal, where you can listen to this very show straight from your Alexa devices. We also got that skill for your video Alexa devices as well. Again, say Alexa, open podcast portal, and just say welcome to, or welcome back to podcast portal. We're working on getting the new update for the app there. We just don't know what we're doing just yet, but we are going to get it up there as soon as we can. As always, this is TGIF reminding you to one, trust in the Lord in all your ways, to lean out to your own understandings, and three, in all your ways, acknowledge Him. And He shall direct your path. Thank you and good night.